I'm here to talk about dance therapy and mental illness. I'll start with mental illness because it's pervasive in our culture. It's not that only a few of us are ill. Many of us are. One in five American citizens takes a psychotropic medication. In a given year, 25% of us are diagnosed with an actual illness. In layman's terms, I mean a significant disturbance in a person's thinking or emotional regulation or behavior that is such that their basic mental functioning is severely impaired. When it's impaired enough in America, you can be locked up and treated against your will. Hence the stigma that our patients experience in our culture. Recently, a woman 19 years old was admitted onto my unit. At home for a month, her behavior well deteriorated. She doesn't speak to anyone. She rarely eats. She sleeps erratically. She's internally preoccupied, is that she's focused within her mind. She has brief episodes of frozen movement where she doesn't move at all. This can happen if she's eating, if she's lying down. Once I saw her stretch, and in the stretch, she froze. And she kept, she stayed there 25 minutes. Imagine. And no one can move her. She's there, trapped. Now, this is a, a, an extreme example. But this is what the onset as of a severe illness really looks like. Now, dance therapy can address this. It's based on the idea that I can use dance as a therapeutic intervention to help a patient integrate her functioning. It's based on the, the relationship I establish with her and the movement we engender together. That's the core of the experience. The movement itself, well, it has a theme. And the theme is what we address. The theme is what we integrate into the treatment. What we share, the movement we share, is the essence of the transaction. Let's look at her again. I'm going to call her Caroline. She's 19. She's been on the unit six weeks, and she's decided last week to come to her first group. The group began very small. That is, there were six or seven of us, and we started with a very small warm-up. Moving something like this, and it did not develop quickly. Quite the contrary. All the movement was very slow and small. And I would mirror different patients. This is what we do in our group, in our therapy. We mirror. That is, I try to copy as best I can how someone's moving. I do it a little less intensely so as not to, well, overwhelm what they're doing. And I'm hoping they will feel seen and that they can see how they look like when they move the man in the manner in which they're moving. This is how I try to establish some sort of relationship. In this particular warm-up, patients would pick up the movement that I was copying or mirroring from people. They would do that. And when patients pick up a movement and we're all willing to do it, I go with it. I try to develop it. Because that's where I think the need of the group is finding its expression. And that's what I'm after. At some point, Caroline went from a small movement to something like this. She extended her spine, she flexed in her hips, and then she rotated off the vertical axis, like that. That's how she moved, that slowly. I mirrored her, and people picked up what we were doing. And we were all doing this for a good minute maybe two. And at some point, someone in the group, I'll call her Betsy, she reached forward in this movement sequence 
creating a sequence, she reached forward. And I mirrored her. And we all picked this up. We were rotating and reaching. I asked, what, why are we reaching? What are we reaching for? That was the idea. And Betsy, she did say, she said, home. And we were there where I hoped we would be. We've gone from a concrete movement to a metaphor. We've, we've lifted the movement experience into the realm of the imagination where a patient can interpret for herself what a movement means. And we did that. We all said home. And then we said other things. Caroline was silent, but she changed the movement. She made herself tall. She took a small step, and she reached forward like that. Just that. I mirrored that. We picked that up. We were all doing that. And then Caroline moved further forward, making eye contact with the woman opposite her. And their fingers touched. And then Caroline changed the movement. She embraced her, her hands. They did this. And we all did that. And then Caroline changed partners and did it with someone else. And we all did that. We all held hands. I'm wondering, what can I ask? What can I possibly ask to bring this further? And while I'm arguing with myself about what I could ask, the movement begins to dissipate. This happens. An expression rises to some sort of climax and then diminishes. That happens often. And that's exactly what happened here. Before I could ask, it was beginning to end. So I asked, how can we end this group? And there was only silence. That often happens. To sum up, I'd like to try to give Caroline a voice. I believe she'd say something like this. I want to be here. I want to be safe with some people. I have something to share. And they have something to share with me. I have within myself the capacity to generate a movement or an idea that's mine, and I can share that. And others want that, want to do that with me. I want my life back. I used to do that, and I want to do that again. That's how dance therapy can work. It's based on the movement that we create and make external and express. We're relying on her capacity or her patient's capacity to generate an expression that is his own and is that in itself is healing, that he could share with another person and that he could receive from other people. That's how it works. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh.